What's going on everyone? I am on my knees right now because I'm using a PC case box as a makeshift desk for the time being. I just put together a custom loop uh, for a streaming PC, which really makes no sense, but uh, I decided to go over the top here and I like the way it looks. Maybe we'll use it as a showpiece when we do live streams from now on. You'll find there's an Avermedia uh, capture card in there. We'll talk about that in a second, but for now, time to get to the tech porn.
All right, so let's talk about what changed since what you just saw in the B-roll. Uh, first off, the loop is different. It's configured differently. There are two bends that I had to redo and actually flip-flop uh, based on the ports on the reservoir because the reservoir has a dedicated in port and a dedicated out port, at least on the right side, I'm, or on the left side, excuse me. So I'm using both of those on the left, which means that only one is an in port, only one is an out port. Those were flip-flops. So I actually had the, <laughs> the pump was feeding the the import on the reservoir whereas it should have been the other way around right the reservoir should be feeding the pump and because i did it the other way around we had a lot of air bubbles in the loop there's still a bunch of air bubbles in the loop i think it's just because of the nature of the reservoir i don't think it's supposed to be um set vertically like this uh but it, it should be okay for streaming like it's not like a gaming pc we're not going to use some heavy you know cp rendering on here so this will be okay it's pretty quiet and that was the goal and it looks pretty good too. Now a bit more on this Fantex Reservoir, you can actually find it linked below in the video description. It is not on sale as of the publishing date of this video, but it will be very soon and I encourage you to at least consider it if you're gonna use, you know, use something like this for custom loop. Uh, it looks phenomenal. Fantex always makes beautiful blocks uh, and this reservoir is no exception. It actually includes an integrated RGB LED strip, which I did not throw in there because I already have a strip kind of running up top here. And I haven't configured it, to be honest. I haven't even plugged this into a monitor yet, so I haven't done anything to the PC. It's just running stock for the you know first time booting up. Uh, but this strip is from Cable Mod, as are the cables that I showed you earlier. And the strip has RGBW compatibility, also UV compatibility, so really everything in one big wide strip. And it runs all the way across the chassis up top. Now on to these sexy cables. I teased them a bit earlier in the B-roll, but I really want to just, just like focus on these for a second because they have really stepped up their game with the Pro Series, which is what we're sporting here. Uh, I decided to go with a simple, almost monochromatic, so black and gray color scheme, of course, to complement the Gigabyte Designer or Designer, however you want to call it, uh, X299 motherboard. So the silver theme with that, also the Corsair Dominator Platinums. Uh, so the silver accents are definitely there. And that's why I included a bit of silver in the 24 pin cable. The rest of the cables though, the VGA, uh, the, the card cable, also the EPS cables up top are black. And I just, I wanted to keep it that way. I didn't want to go over the top with anything too colorful. Now the Pro Series cables from Cable Mod will cost a bit more, I'll admit, but they are worth it. So if you want to buy a new set of cables, you don't want to you know, sleeve them yourselves or, or ask a friend over and over like I do with Tony, because Tony supplies me with cables left and right and his cables are excellent. Uh, if you want to bug a company for once, you can go to Cable Mod and set those up via the link below. If you want to configure your own set of cables like I've done, you can check out their configurator um, and you won't be disappointed at all with any set of cables really that you choose from. Uh, but I went with nylon here, or no, paracord, excuse me. Is it paracord? Paracord or nylon? I get confused. I think it's paracord uh, and the Pro Series cables there. But if you want to go with nylon, of course, you're going to have that like shinier sheen to the cables. They'll be a bit tougher, a bit more rigid, but they'll all look great. As long as you get the color scheme right, I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Now the case I chose is the Fractal Design Define C. It's not the tempered glass edition because that case is currently being used for another project. So I just went with the standard uh, acrylic model. Still looks great. I still think this is one of the best cases you can possibly buy right now. Uh, and check out the cable management at the rear. I really want to highlight this. So on the right side of this case, it is such an easy task to manage and route cables on this right side. I would say considering how compact this case is, it has has the best cable management like setup uh, period. You just have so much space uh, near the front there with that little indention. It does limit you to just ATX motherboards, but I really think this is a worthy trade-off because sliding that right panel on with such ease is just, I don't know, there's no feeling like it. Now that's really about it for the specs. Uh, you know, nothing too special in here. I'm reusing the i9 7900X again. That was from the uh, from the winter build, when that build was destroyed, the CPU seems to be working, that's great. Um, but I want to touch lastly on the capture card, that was the point of this build after all, right, was to make this a streaming PC. So we do have a capture card from Avermedia here, the uh, Live Gamer HD2. This is only a 1080p 60 capable capture card, I plan to run an external camera to this and then uh, we'll be able to up the ante when it comes to live streams in the future, which is why this build exists in the first place. 
Uh, we, now, we could have gone with something like an Elgato 4K, you know, $400 capture card, but we're not looking to stream in 4K anytime soon. The bandwidth is just, it's really not there for us at this point. I don't really think it's necessary either. I think most of you guys prefer 60 FPS uh, with the live stream aspect at least, and then the crispy 4K shots when it comes to videos like these. So that's why we went with the cheaper solution here from Avermedia. You can find it linked in the video description along with all the other parts used in this build. I'd like to thank Alpha Cool for resupplying the parts. I've actually reused these parts from Alpha Cool like three times now. They're very durable. Uh, the Fantex Reservoir, we reused some thermal tape components like the pump and the pump housing, uh, as well as this cool little uh, low temperature meter down here. So what are we running at? 31 degrees Celsius, not bad at idle. So if you like this video, or at least this really awkward camera angle, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for building with us.